what's going on guys welcome back to channel man it is absolutely beautiful out here today if you guys can't tell in the background uh it is bluebird skies honestly not my favorite fish but it's pretty to look at uh but the best thing about today is the wind man the wind is low and the tides are low uh, so i'm hoping this knee tide will keep the uh, tidal fluctuation or tidal movement down keep the mud down and keep the visibility up now winds man we finally got a break in the winds today you guys we got single digits out of the south until about two o'clock so really that's kind of my cutoff point as soon as that wind kicks up i'm going to throw deuces and i'm going to head back to the house and uh, hopefully by then i'll have enough fish to uh, kind of uh, have a good day now target species for the day for me is going to be again big trout and i'm going to fish around some of these areas where these flounders should be returning uh, big 16 17 ounce inch flounder will definitely go in the cooler uh, if i do hook into her for uh for a little bit of dinner later on tonight but that's really it man we're gonna throw a whole bunch of artificials and see if we can get a nice inshore bite so let's get going right on them. Let's see how many I get. Oh, <laughs> I might have got too many. <laughs> Jeez. So I was on my way to my uh, first spot and I saw a little bit of a uh, live bait kind of flipping around and I wanted to uh, just honestly catch some live bait as an option. So uh, I saw these little smaller um, uh, manhaden kind of flipping around. Just got myself in a nice position here. I got them pinned up against the sandbar so they couldn't really dive too far down and I threw this net one time and I absolutely waxed them. I'm actually gonna leave this net in the water. Let me feel this live well. I didn't expect to catch a full net of these guys. So, <laughs> there you go. There's a couple man, there's a couple man Aiden. Now, uh, like I said, man, this, this is way too many. So I'm actually gonna open the net up, try to get some of these guys out. I don't wanna slime the whole deck of my boat, but I'd like to get about maybe a dozen two dozen of these guys and that'd be about it all right we got live bait baby uh you got the boat all cleaned up had to throw some buckets on to get the slime out of here but i didn't really have plans on fishing with live bait today but when you see some bait like that out in the water it never hurts to have live bait as an option especially when you don't have to pay for it uh so we're done we're gonna let this water drain out as we uh, head to uh, our very first spot so let's keep rolling all right, so we're out here on the very first spot. Looks really, really good. I got some oyster shells all the way down. Uh, nice little mud flat. The water is slick out here, you guys. It is flat, calm. I can see every bit of the bait pushing. Uh, if a redfish or anything wants to let me know where it is, I will definitely take that opportunity to throw a plastic at it. Uh, but for now, I'm just kind of out here just uh, trying different various steps to see where the fish are. Now, I will be throwing a couple different various baits today. Uh, you guys saw me net those uh, live manhaden earlier. So I will get to a point where I'm gonna soak some of those, maybe at low tide around some areas. Uh, but for right now, I wanna throw a bunch of artificials. Now, I am throwing something brand new. You guys haven't seen me really throw a lot of hard baits on the channel, but this is a, this is a uh, wake bait here that I'm gonna start off with. My buddy is uh, launching a brand new hard bait company and he's got a bunch of really cool hard baits for me to uh, kind of R&D. He's got this thing painted up a really, really beautiful white with gold with kind of a uh, red damaged head here and uh, this wake bait should uh, swim just a little bit subsurface, maybe a few inches below the surface. And I'm hoping that's enough to grab a big old trout's attention or even a, a red, clumsy redfish that wants to come and try to eat it. Uh, so we're just gonna fish around. We're gonna throw around. We're gonna see uh, where the fish are, see if we can try to get a nice little pattern for them. And uh, that's it, let's go. That was definitely, definitely a flounder bite. Definitely, she had it in her mouth and I pulled it right out. So let's give her something to want to hang on to. Get a little bit of this sauce in here. This is some uh, shrimp sauce, Procure. This stuff works great. Let's see if we can just get them to hold on. Let's run that back. Got it. 
Ah, it worked. What are you, a trout? <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's not what I just uh, hooked earlier. Oh, there she goes. Quick release. A little shaky head. I want to be a little bit bigger than that. But it's good. Signs of life. I dig it. Something out here besides just bluefish. All right, let's keep throwing. That was quick. Might, uh, might start bumping into some more fish here. I pretty much worked all the way down the shell bank. I've gotten out of that area where the current was just obsolete. There was no current in there at all. And current is one of the things I talk about is my big four. So now I'm out here on a little bit more of a shell point where we do have current, have some uh, good amount of water moving through here. We still have about another hour or two before uh, dead low. There's another hit, tap, tap. All right, so we got trout sitting right there. Yep, they're out here in the current. They're about 20 feet off the edge. So let's go left four. We'll give them a little bit of space. Now, to, now that I've established the fact that they are holding a little bit deeper, I would assume that we're sitting in probably 10 feet of water right here, but I am casting all the way up to one foot or so and just working my way shallow to deep. But they're sitting in this little pocket right here off the edge of these shells. Now, so this is pretty much a low tide technique, guys. Once the tide switches and comes back in, the water moves back up, these fish are gonna just push right back up uh, with that tide and they're gonna move up onto the grass points. They're gonna move up onto those shells. They're gonna get into ambush spots. Uh, but right now with the tide being pulled out, they're either just kind of sitting on a flat chasing bait or they're sitting on some sort of a ledge waiting for everything to come directly to them as the bait gets washed down that, uh, that ledge. <laughs> well, they're sitting right in that same, same spot. Wonder how many are in there. That's one fish hooked and two missed. They're smaller though. All right, let's go back in there again. I'm just gonna go right to it. I was just kind of letting the bait drift and sweep through the the, uh, the current or sweep down that edge, just slightly bumping it. Uh, but now I know where they're sitting. I'm just gonna throw it right in there to them. Got them. So there we go, there's a nice keeper trout. That is what uh, 15, 16, somewhere around there looks like. And look at that little lure hanging out the side of her mouth there. That is old beer run. All right, darling. There you go. There's another one. Woo! <laughs> She's coming in fast. Got a, got another LG. Oh no. Oh no, he's gonna lose that eye. That's not what I want. All right, buddy, we'll get you back. I'm so sorry. Man, as if it's not hard enough to survive in the wild, I just took the little guy's eye up, eyeball away from him. No, well, I guess everything in the ocean needs to eat. The dolphin need to eat. So, it is what it is. That's a good trout. Or a red. Don't be a redfish. <laughs> be, a, be a trout. She's got some weight. What are you? Come on up. Oh, it's a foul hook trout. Huh? Is it? Yeah, foul hooked her. Well, not really. Yeah, I guess I pulled it in from a weird angle. There you go, man. These little guys are stacked up right here. That's another 15 incher. Beautiful fish. I had to put my gloves on because the sand gnats were absolutely destroying me. I put the buff up, <laughs> put, pulled my buff up over my face, sprayed it with uh, some no gnats, and then put my gloves on because, man, these, these gnats are ridiculous out here. It's mainly because there's no wind, but I'm not complaining. 
I'm out here catching fish. Let's keep going. Right there in that same spot. I wonder how many are sitting in there, man. It'd be cool if you could get a camera down there. Another one, man, sitting in that same spot. This is, uh, this is too easy here. What are you doing under there? Get out of there. Another nice keeper. 15, 16 inch fish. Gorgeous. Boy, if I was keeping fish, man, I'd be well on my way. All right, off you go, baby. Take it easy. All right, well, I'm about to commit the biggest cardinal sin in fishing, and that is to leave feeding fish to go look for new fish. Uh, so I could stay back there in that little hole right there and absolutely wear out those 15, 16 inch trout, but uh, that's not what I wanna do. I know they're there, it puts in my mind a type of spot the fish are in right now. So now it's time to get out here and explore new waters. So let's get going. All right, I may have found a spot that I can get out of the wind just a little bit. It's not totally wind protected back here, but man, I can actually fish and hear myself think without the wind ripping across my ears. All right, so here we go, you guys. Just a big old uh, tree line. There's a whole bunch of trees about to fall in, probably two or three more storms, and this thing is gonna get really, really busy as far as structure goes. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just kind of work this uh, shoreline. The water looks great. If you guys can't tell already, this is a nice emerald green color. Uh, for those of you that don't fish coastal Georgia or the low country of South Carolina, uh, this is good color water. <laughs> it's about as pretty much as clear as it gets for uh, the springtime. The algae starting to uh, kind of bloom and the water's going to get a little more cloudy, but um, I like it. So let's get to throwing around man let's see if we can pull something out of these trees there's got to be some big redfish lurking in here and i do know that there are trout in these uh general types of areas so let's do it There's a good redfish. That was a solid thump too. Easy. Easy. <laughs> Boy. She hit that on the dead stick too. I'm gonna run back here and get some of his line back. <laughs> Come on up there, big girl. All right, the hook set isn't great. It's in there. I gotta keep tension on it but it's not punched through, so that's what I wanna be careful of. Let's get her over here to the side. I think she's done. Come on. Yes, dude. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Big old heavy girl, too. Woo! Oh, money, money, money. All right, so here's what I was talking about with that hook. Look at this, guys. It just fell out. 
she hit that thing while I was dead stick and I didn't get a chance to really get a nice hard hook set on her before she took off, but all right, there we go. How about that? <laughs> yeah, baby. Bam! That's a big old girl there. Look at that head. A little double spotter there on the tail. Gorgeous fish. Let's get this net out of the way. And grab a measurement on her. What do you guys think? I was thinking 28 out of the boat. That is a 30 inch redfish. So I'm just gonna slide her in the net for a second. I do want to tag her. It's been a minute since I've got a chance to tag a redfish. So let's go ahead and do that. Get this tag here. Slide it in. Bada bing, bada boom. Turn her over, left side. One, two, three. And there we go, man. Beautifully tagged Georgia redfish, man. It doesn't get any cooler than that, guys. All right, let's get her back. Take her to the back of the boat where it's a little bit lower. Man, what a gorgeous redfish to end my trip on. 30 inch redfish. And uh, I honestly caught her just kind of dead stick and I was playing with a trolling motor, trying to get my navigational heading off of the trees because I was getting a little bit too close to trees and all of a sudden, wham, she hit it. Now, you guys saw how that hook fell out. I was not able to get a nice big hook set on it before she just took off running. Even as sharp as these hooks are, some of these big redfish like that, the cartilage in her mouth is very, very thick. So if you can't feel that you've got that big uh, initial hook set, you guys keep the tension on the line uh, or you will lose the fish. Just one simple turn or me uh, bowing to that fish or dropping that rod tip one time probably would have been all it took to uh, to lose that fish. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode, man. I had a blast out here fishing. The wind's starting to kick up, so it's time for me to uh, head back to the house. And I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care, everyone. God bless. <laughs>